Does everyone think you're crazy for always carrying knives up until the point where they need one and you're the only one in the room that has one? How's it going, everybody? I'm Roll Shambo, the connoisseur and collector of all things sharp and shiny. And if you answered that question with a yes, smack the like button and consider subscribing because you, my friend, are in good company. Today, we're talking about the Sean O'Connell Mini Persian. Now, we're not just going to review it. We're going to rank it. That's right. This is another episode of Grail or Garbage, the series where I systematically and categorically rank and review knives like this one to give you the context that you need to decide if it deserves a spot in your EDC rotation, or in this case, most likely in your display case. Here's how it works. Grail or Garbage is consisting of five categories. Those categories are materials, ergonomics, fidget factor, the lock, and then finally fit and finish. Each of those categories is worth a max of 10 points. At the end of scoring, each category will add up the scores and place it on our leaderboard, which currently looks like this. After which we will finally know, is the Sean O'Connell Persian a grail? Or is it garbage? I'm just going to go ahead and say it. Sean O'Connell is a G. He is absolutely bananas. Guys, this knife is 100% handmade. I'm going to repeat that. This knife is 100% handmade. There is no arguing that this is a custom or that this is a full custom. This is as custom as as a knife can get absolutely bananas all right i'm gonna stop drooling long enough for us to go ahead and give this a rank it's time that we rank it we've got to we've already ranked one custom knife on this channel and it's time that we go in and do two for two yet another shout out to my man mike from voodoo works garage on instagram uh, make sure to give him a follow he's absolutely killer for lending this to me so that i can check it out i can't believe that i have this in my hands because this is this is a magical knife okay um it's it's phenomenal. Let's go ahead and get going, starting off with materials. Now, materials is always heavily weighed against two things. One, the cost, and two, the availability. So let's talk about the cost real quick. Because this is a custom, uh, the cost is going to be more of a price range, depending upon how you order this or what configuration you get. And because it's a full custom and because no one can argue that, and this is most definitely a one of one scenario, it really comes down to what you get. So I couldn't find this specific one. This one is what's called the mini Persian. Uh, I couldn't find this specific one anywhere. Uh, I couldn't find it anywhere. Now I did find some on recon one website and those were going anywhere in the realm of, you know, I would say 1200 upwards of 2000. So the availability is astronomically hard to find, uh, because you would basically have to request this specific one get made just like this with this green anno uh, without a backspacer and with green anno barrel spacers with magna cut and with titanium yeah did i mention that magna cut and titanium now because there's not a whole lot of information out there i don't know what the hrc rating is on this uh sean if you're watching do me a favor Hit us with your HRC target in the comments, my man. That would be fantastic. I love hearing from designers in the comments. So yeah, titanium, 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 magna cut. Price range, I don't know. Somewhere in the realm of fifteen hundred to two grand. 
So with all of that being said, I don't really know how I can give this a bad score. This is a nine out of 10. When, when we're talking about materials, I don't know what else do you want. And for the price range on a custom, whatever people are willing to pay for it is what it's worth. And you know, for those for those reasons, it's got to be a nine out of 10. Now, moving on to the second category, which is ergonomics. How does it feel in the hands? Uh, you know, is it comfortable? Are there any extra edges that are sharp that shouldn't be sharp? No, uh, this is a ergonomic dreamland. You know, when knife reviewers say, well, it's good, but it's not hand meltingly good. This is hand meltingly good. Uh, let's take a deeper dive, shall we? These are slab style handle scales that have been contoured by hand. Let me repeat that. They're contoured by hand. That's pretty impressive. We do have some jimping up here at the tang spine side of the blade uh, with the Persian style blade. So the jimping is as far as it can go. There's not so much of a finger cut out here, but there is a spot for your finger and that is also comfortable. Uh, it's fantastic, in fact. The pocket clip, normally the pocket clip is an ergonomic detractor, but in this case, it actually adds to it. You heard that right. The pocket clip adds to it. Pocket clip, also made by hand. Look at that contouring. At first glance, you might say, well, you know what, that doesn't look like a super difficult pocket clip, but to get that perfect level on the contouring, by hand, I'm going to say that a lot during this video, uh, it's absolutely bananas. Love the Anno on that too, by the way. It's kind of a Joker theme going on, maybe a Loki theme. But not only is it beautiful, it feels good. It feels really good. Now, this is the Sean O'Connell Mini Persian, or at least that's what the Certificate of Authenticity says. Um... I cannot find this anywhere. Uh, these finger cutouts, for example, they seem almost like they've been jeweled, like the internals have been. Uh, they are perfect. Perfect. It's like he knew how to shape it to fit a finger, and not just any finger, but like everyone's fingers. The lock bar, same kind of chamfering there, and very, very comfortable to engage and disengage. It, it's, I mean, the the ergonomics on here are the best ergonomics that I've ever felt on any knife, bar none, period. The ergonomics on this knife are a 10 out of 10. I don't know how they could be any better considering that this was handmade. Uh, the ergonomics are better than any production knife I've ever felt. Um, just alone, without even looking at it, your hand falls in the right spot. And here's the thing, I've got a full grip, full grip with pommel sticking out with large to extra large size man hands. This is absolutely fantastic. Now that we've gotten that out of the way, I know, uh, 10 out of 10, I, I've already said it, can't take it back. Let's talk about the fidget factor. You know, the fidget factor on here is pretty good, but if I'm being honest and fair, the action on here could be better. I'm pretty positive this is running on bearings. The detent is not super weak, but it's also not super strong, which means that, you know, you're, you're not getting the most out of it. Now, the blade itself isn't very heavy, so, you know, you can shake it shut. Um, it doesn't stop this from being a great knife to fidget with. Although when you think about the fact that the lead time on this knife is about two years, uh, maybe you'd be a little careful fidgeting with it. But the joy that this knife brings is kind of a fidget factor in and of itself. Uh, the action for reverse flick, ec excellent. Being able to just run your finger up this oblong hole, and get it to flick out, excellent. It's also a front flipper, but to be honest with you, the front flipper is not my favorite as a front flipper. I would 100% always spidey flick this. As you can see, maybe it's just that the bearings need some 
some KPL. I don't know. I'm being very careful with this knife because I don't want to. Uh, I I don't want to take advantage of it. This is this is one of those knives that I can tell that it's been carried. I can tell that it was meant to be carried. If you were to go to Sean O'Connell's Instagram page, I'm pretty sure he mentions on there that he makes knives to be used. And I love that. He wants people to take his hard work and use it and carry it. And this is just a joy to to play with. It's a joy to hold. I've already gone over the ergonomics. Uh, I'm getting lost in the weeds here. For Fidget Factor, I'm going to give it a very solid 8 out of 10. Now, the next category, the lock. It is a frame lock. Now, this, this lock right here is kind of early. I would say that this is about a 20% lockup. Um, now, there is no blade play up, down, left, or right. No issues with that whatsoever. There's also no steel lock bar insert or over travel stop, although I suppose that if you were really cranking on it, this pocket clip could potentially act as that, but if you look closely, you'll notice the pocket clip does not actually make contact with the handle scales. I'm okay with that. Uh, the The lock bar doesn't feel like it's going to over travel uh, and it feels very solid. Because there is no steel lock bar interface, uh, essentially you've got titanium on hardened carbon steel. If you've seen my video on my Strider AR75, or on the Eric Luther Orphan. Uh, both of those knives also don't have a steel lock bar insert. And the lockup on both of those knives is also very, very good. Uh, I would say borderline perfect. I don't know how you could get a more solid lockup. So without that steel lock bar interface, you are actually going to get a very solid lockup. So lockup is not an issue. Lockup, lockout, very good. Uh, for those reasons, it is still a frame lock, and while frame locks are good and I do like them, there is nothing past that point that's absolutely phenomenal, except for, of course, how you engage and disengage the lock bar itself. The 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 ergonomics just on that steel lock, or excuse me, on that lock bar, are really good. So it's going to get a respectable eight out of ten for the lock. Now finally, and especially when we're talking custom knives, this is my favorite topic. Let's talk fit and finish. Fit and finish is not just about how well it was manufactured. It's also about the design language. There are not that many knives out there that look like this. Are there other knives that have a, you know, a trailing point or a Persian style blade? Sure. But I haven't seen any that have this aesthetic. Um, this is absolutely gorgeous. The perfect size for an EDC knife, something that you could carry or put in your display case. Although Sean O'Connell says you should carry this knife and I tend to agree with him. Uh, this knife is absolutely bonkers. The fact that he got contouring on slab style handle scales and he did it by hand that he contoured the pocket clip and did it by hand that he hand ground the the blade that he made the blade by hand i'm i'm blown away by the fit and finish and the more i look at it the more it makes sense why the lead time on a knife like this is two years and when you think about it that's also why it's expensive two years of someone's life was spent crafting this what I can only call, you know, custom genius. Is it perfect? No. But when we're talking about custom knives, oftentimes the imperfections are what gives it so much character. It reminds you that it was a man behind this, not necessarily a machine. And it reminds us what man can do. We take our tools for granted. We take our CNC machines and our computer programs. We take them for granted. They do good work. But so can a man with determination and a couple of years on his hand. This knife is phenomenal. Um, a couple things that could have been better. Uh, detent. You know, I'm not, I'm not mad at the detent, but it could have been better. When I see the amount of detail work and time and energy that went into crafting these handle scales, 
and into making this blade, I know that the detent could have been a little bit better. Um, that's kind of my only gripe is that I would have liked a little bit stiffer of a detent, but that's really a, a personal preference. For all I know, the detent was tuned to the customer's specifications. And in that case, I don't know if I could hold it against the knife maker for that. Either way, it's not going to, to count for much because I'm still giving this a 9 out of 10 for fit and finish. What Sean O'Connell has been able to perfect here with this with this style, with this knife specifically, is nothing short of genius. Let's go ahead and add up all the scores. So, for materials, it got a 9 out of 10. For ergonomics, it got a best in class and best ever, 10 out of 10. I've never given a 10 out of 10 rank, ranking before, but I'm blown away by what was achieved here on an ergonomic level. This knife is hand meltingly good and it sets the bar. I, I don't know if I will ever hold another knife that feels this good in the hand and I'm trying not to be over dramatic about it, but the, the ergonomics are out of this world. They're, they're really, really good. For Fidget Factor, it got an 8 because they're good, but the detent could have been better. Uh, for the lock, it also got an 8, and for fit and finish, it got a 9. You add up all of those scores, and you get a new top dog. There's a new sheriff in town. We're talking 44 out of 50. No knife has ever scored higher on Grail or Garbage. Guys. That's all I got for you. If you agree with me, comment down below. If you disagree with me, comment down below. Have you ever held a Sean O'Connell knife in your hand before? Do you want to? Would you wait two years to have something like this made for you? If you liked the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, boohoo, there's a button for you too. And if you want to see more grail or garbage rankings, if you want to see more overviews and reviews, make sure you hit subscribe. I'm Roll Shambo. I'll catch you on the flip side.